Milano is definitely there. I think George Bennett is always going to be very difficult to, to gain any time back. He'll be marked. Um, so I think with only three riders starting the, the, the race today, Milano will need George Bennett to, to actually help him in this final lap. Well, they crossed the finish line. And now we wait for the peloton to get the most accurate of timing. Look at those images here. <laughs> it's uh, it's getting worse. Uh, they started at 1.30 local time. So um, we are towards the end of the afternoon and it's getting uh, a little bit darker. But also the weather circumstances making these images uh, really hard to uh, to decipher and hard to produce. Also still in this group is uh, Taminia David van der Poel for Alpes in the Koning and uh, Schuert Bax, but not Jakub Moreczko. The clock is ticking. It's indeed 39 seconds, uh, Brian, the um, difference between the first group and the peloton. Place your bets. Peloton or first group? What do you think? I think it's going to be the uh, the peloton. Um, I think, you know, George Bennett will come up. He'll play his part for Milano, that is still there. But, you know, still a, a good gap there. They haven't leaked too much time since they've come on. Um, first time through, it was just over one minute. So they haven't lost too much. I think Osborne may decide he goes alone on this climb and, and just goes all in. Um, he seems the, the strongest of this breakaway, but I think there's still a little bit of riding behind. We're going to see some, some last gasp attacks uh, from the the, uh, the peloton, and, and unfortunately, these three riders could be swept up. Jason Osborne, he's giving everything on this climb. The uh, Raya Langkawi here on the beautiful island of Langkawi. Hugo Tomir is now overboard, meaning we've got two riders left. Uh, the climb is a kilometer long, but it has got double digit gradients. And after a short descent, uh, we go back up again. We did have the steepest part because this comes in the first 500 meters. They still defend the lead of 30 seconds, but the peloton is uh, inching ever closer there although looking in the background I still do not see them as they are almost at the top of this climb meaning that our two rivals for the King of the Mountains competition so the King of the Mountains competition will not be going for those points and we can already tell you that uh, Mot Sharif will be our King of the Mountains if he finishes the race and there he is he's still in the peloton so he'll be fine but um, well the camera guy is um, causing a whole different situation. There is Jan Savarensburg with a little bit of an attack there on the climb. I was just about to say, if the peloton ride like this, then the breakaway is going to stay away. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit surprised at the bottom. Nobody went all in and I think it kind of surprised a lot of people. And uh, Jan van Rensburg deciding to do to go do what I thought others would have done a little bit earlier on. So the peloton all across the road. Um, so this is a, a, a terrific move. Not too sure, you know, one or two riders are going to make it across. Uh, but over the first part of the climb, the second part still to come. So I think Molinar has is, is, played a blinder here. He's, he's played the card that, you know, I've not got anything left. But he's obviously got something left and, and he's able to go with Osborne. Osborne definitely in the blue for Alpes and Deconic, the strongest um, of the riders in front. Um, but it's what happens um, behind is going to make the difference in who's going to win this stage. The GPS indicates 14 seconds, but I'm pretty sure that is the gap to Hugo Tumir and not to the peloton. They are not 14 seconds behind these two. This is the final little kick up for Jason Osborne and Alex Molinar, who is on the smallest of gears trying to keep the wheel of the man from Germany there. Um, I think they still have about those 30, 35 seconds at the moment, Brian. And with um, just under seven kilometers to go when we reach the top of this climb, there it is. They still stand a pretty good chance, especially like you said, there's no concerted effort from the peloton just yet. And Osborne is, well, he's mightily strong today. Yes, he's on a good day. And, you know, he's asking for a little bit of help from Molinar. Molinar has already kind of played his cards and he's kept them close to his chest and kept uh, a lot of energy back. And that's why he's still there. Flick of the elbow from uh, Osborne. Not too sure what he's going to get from Molinar, and it's a, a nothing. Um, but Yancey van Rensburg is coming. But, you know, I was expecting a little bit more from the peloton behind on what I saw um, from UAE and, and possibly EF Education Easy Post. 
Yancey van Rensburg is getting close. If mm -hmm. they start to mess around, then Yancey van Rensburg will be will be straight on them. We know he can sprint. He's got them in his sights. We've seen some more riders trying to kind of come over the top of that uh, last climb. So it's a pursuit now. Mm -hmm. And uh, can Yancey van Rensburg, <laughs> who started the season without yeah. a contract, won the uh, South African title, get his first win of the, the season? Yeah, what an amazing story that would be if he actually pulls it off after, well, in April, uh, deciding he and his wife to return to South Africa. When he landed in South Africa, he got a phone call from John Lange whether he wanted to be part of the Lotto Sudal team. They went on the first flight back. Luckily for them, the house uh, they had lived in in Girona had not been... Um, um, rented out again so they could go could move back to the same house and then he was selected to do the Tour de France as well um, yeah an absolute wonderful story and, and what an amazing end to the season would it be for him if he pulls off a win here but still 15 seconds to bridge Reinhard Janssen van Rensburg the South African champion he was left without a contract after the uh, Quebec and Next Hash team folded, uh, picked up by Lotto Sudal in April, um, was very important in some of the wins of Caleb Ewan, did the Tour de France and this is his last race day of the year. He's got a handful of seconds to bridge. We've seen that in the bunch sprints, Brian, he just did not have the speed to win a race, but um, yeah, in a breakaway of three, it could well happen. He's got them in, this, in his sights. I think it's still significant. Um, with Molinar starting to ride now, it's given uh, Osborne a, a little bit of a rest. I still think it, unless there's a, a huge concerted effort from behind and there's another rider only a matter of kind of 10, 15 seconds behind Yancey van Rensburg, I'm not too sure he's going to make it across to the duo in front. It's been a, you know, a valiant effort so far, but um, I was a little bit surprised that we never saw you know, other attacks. I thought they would come back together, but for me now, unless it's a, unless it's a huge effort from the, uh, the peloton behind, it does look as if Osborne and Molinar, especially with Molinar starting to ride, um, they could be just about hanging on. We have a, a little bit of a counter-attack coming from the peloton with uh, stage winner Lionel Terminio as well. Um, but the situation as it is, Jason Osborne, the 28-year-old from Mainz in Germany, and Alex Morenlad, the 23-year-old from uh, Catalonia in Spain. He is a Dutch na a national, um, but uh, he lives in Spain. They have 21 seconds. Look at the pace on this little downhill sector here. 21 seconds on Reinhard Janssen van Rensburg, then a handful of seconds on Hugo Tumir and uh, Lionel Tamigno, and just a few meters behind that at the moment is the peloton as well. But we just have five kilometers to go. Just a little kick um, up, three, three and a half kilometers from the finish line, and then, um, well, basically, downhill towards the coastline again here of the beautiful island of Lankawi although we will probably not get the beauty shots that we had yesterday maybe they can just pull them back in the ones that's that the trouble you've yesterday. got in this, this circuit if you're doing 65 kilometers an hour the chasers have to do about 70 to bring you back and we know, we know how hard that is um, so with the the climb kind of dealt with holding on to in 20 odd seconds it could be enough Molinar knows that if he was to sit on Osborne that's his best chance I think for Molinar his best chance of winning this stage is by sitting on the whole way but he risks losing everything he lists even he risks even lose um, you know he finishing in second place on, on this stage Tamino uh, just behind for Alpes and De Koenig. well he's in kind of no man's land he'll be not contributing although he attacked to try and go across to um, Yancey van Rensburg and hopefully we're just starting to kind of pick them up now but yeah he's going to cross to Yancey van Rensburg but UE, EF Education, Easy Post, you know, what's happening behind, and they are just behind, but I think it's a little bit too late. The efforts now from the peloton, I just said it needs a huge, huge concerted effort, and if you're not making that effort and throwing everything at it, then unfortunately it looks as if uh, Alpes and De Koenig are in the box seat yet again to take another stage. 
Yeah, Jason Osborne was close to a win in the Arctic race of Norway. He's only joined the team in June of this year, the Alpes in the Koenig Continental team, and uh, done about uh, 23 race days with them. So yeah, he would uh, put himself in, in, in a top spot, actually, to uh, to get a new contract. He's, of course, not the only eSports world champion with Alpes in the Koenig. Jay Fine is the other one, and uh, well, that turned out pretty uh, pretty well with two stage win this year in the world. Uh, Rene van Rensburg almost caught by the peloton, uh, commanded at the moment by Uno X. Um, they want to keep Torsten Trien on the podium and of course they want that green jersey for Ellen Blikra. But the stage win, well, I think it's out of reach. Yeah, with two kilometers ago, they left it a little bit too late. I was expecting a little bit more from, from these teams. Maybe caught looking at each other. Blikra is in the uh, the green points jersey, but uh, Jansi van Rensburg, the South African champion, it's not going to be the uh, you know the fairy tale end to the season for him, which has been a, a great season for him. Just when he thought he was he was out of it, um, but it does look as if the the German in the breakaway, Jason Osborne, uh, could be taking yet another stage. But you know this is last gasp efforts from uh, the peloton. But just looking second and third place, Alpes in Deconic policing things all over the roads. It's down to two riders in front. Who's it going to be? Yeah, let's go back to the leaders because we should be in that final kilometer. We are in the final 500 meters as it is with Jason Osborne in the blue for Alpes in the Koenig and Alex Molina in the purple for Lucas PH. They're 400 meters out from the finish line. In the background, the peloton is not there. These riders are on their way to the finish line. It could be the purple for Jason Osborne. The third for Alex Molina. Osborne is going to start the sprint in first place with Molina on his wheel. Of course, Molina has been suffering and uh, Jason Osborne is doing a lot of work, but has he been playing a little bit of theater? He has been playing a little bit of theater and Alex Molina is the winner of the final stage ahead of Jason Osborne. Well, that is a surprising outcome. Maybe he played a little bit of a blinder there, Alex Molina, but uh, yeah, he wins the stage for Bulldogs BH. And then the peloton sprint. This is also for that green jersey and Ellen Blikra is really going for it. it Seems like Molana is just ahead of him, but uh, Ellen Blikra secures that green points jersey with this sprint here. And the overall winner, of course, is Ivan Sosa after his win on the Genting Islands. The uh, rider from the Movistar team gets another Colombian winning this for Mankawi. But three stage wins for the men from, uh, from Belgium, the team from Belgium. Uh, one of the um, most important junior races here 
into Netherlands and Belgium. He won the general classification that same year of Romagné, and now he will be the final stage of the Tour of Langkawi. The man um, from the Netherlands, both um, uh, with, well, with Spanish roots as well, a little bit, a little bit of Spain, a little bit of, uh, of the Netherlands, and he wins the stage. Uh, of course, he's got, there's a Dutch flag there. Alex Molen now wins stage eight. Uh, eight stages, eight different winners. Jason Osborne, Molano winning the sprint of the bunch. And Vika securing the green jersey. Selig, Kampen, Molen, Sosa is the overall winner ahead of Hugh Carthy. Torsten Trien, what a year for him, um, having cancer, returning and now a third place in Lankawi. George Bennett and Rubio, the top five. And ninth place for Sambayas, the best Asian rider. for example, also the Marechko years, but eight different winners and eight, well, pretty interesting stages as well, with some, uh, some really good races. Of course, 